Hey everyone, it's Saoirse, and it is time to talk about our favorite reads of 2023. I think I started out the year with a goal of about 40 books. I made it to 21. <clears throat> if you follow me on Goodreads, you can see through the year where I slowly give up on my goal, so I, I lowered it to like 35, 30, 25, 20. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. You know, those goals are just, like, aspirational, and I read some really great books this year, and quality is more important than quantity. So I have a few for you here, and I'll show you in the order in which I read them. Now, this is pretty great. I started out 2023 with one of the most important books that I've ever read in my life, and that I assume I ever will read in my life, and that is The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk doctor. Um, I will link my videos to all these books in the description. This was one of the longest videos I've ever made. It was like an hour or something. And I recommend this book to absolutely everybody now. I don't care if you think you didn't experience trauma in your past. I think it is useful for everybody. And this book, I think it kind of set the tone for my year because as many negative things might have happened last year, you know, that's life, it, that's going to happen every year. I really think I had one of the biggest healing and growth years um, that I've ever had. And it's it might be because I started it with this. So this got me into the mindset of um, forgiving myself and recognizing where my trauma comes from, why I have the responses I do, it it allowed me to look at all of my behaviors and recognize what started them, you know, why I am the way that I am now and um, react to things the way that I do and that allows me now to, since I've identified that, work on healing more because I don't think I really could have done that if I didn't recognize the things that I perceived as wrong with me, um, if I didn't recognize them as being the result of trauma, if I just continued calling myself crazy and unreasonable, um, you know, nothing, nothing good would have come of that. So I really, really recommend this. It's going to tell you how your brain works. It is so packed with information and real life examples. I can't say enough good things about it. Just read it. Please just read it. <clears throat> Switching gears, then we have Thunderstruck by Eric Larson. And this is one that really confused me at first because I couldn't figure out the genre of it. I could not figure out if this was supposed to be historical fiction or if this, um, if this was history, like th there was nothing embellished here. So that's the great thing about this writer is he manages to tell this story in like a novelistic way so that it reads sort of like a thriller um but he's not making it up it is history and all the quotes everything in quotations are taken from like newspapers of the time and journals letters things like that so it's um it's the story of holly crippen and guglielmo Guglielmo marconi marconi is the one who created the the um, telegraph so that we can do, you know, Morse code and uh, ships could talk to each other and all that good stuff. The reason the Titanic was able to send an SOS. So it's, for me, like, that was the fascinating part of it. I picked it up because of the um, Titanic link, even though the Titanic's barely mentioned. Um, anything to do with it tangentially is going to interest me because I love this time period. I love the history of this era. So I highly recommend it for anybody into history, into inventions, into murder mysteries, because this has all of that. I mean, it's a murder mystery that is real and is able to be solved because of the growing technology of the time. And I am so all about technology in other times. You know, when imagine living in a time when the telegraph was new and thrilling and 
um, and a lot of people didn't believe in it. You know, this is never going to be a thing. You should give up now, kid. And now look at the ways that we're able to communicate across the globe. Like, there's so much that I did not understand about telegraph communication. That there's, there's cables under the ocean that would connect so that, you know, the US and the UK were communicating. It's, it's all completely just madness, and I loved it. Um, and yeah, you don't have to be like a total nerd to enjoy it because it really does have that like novel feel to it. So, love that. So yeah, I, I'm looking here. I do have one, two, three, four out of seven are nonfiction. And that's very like me. I, as much as I like to read and write fiction, I keep finding myself drawn to true stories. Um, the older I get, I think the, the more true stories I read. And here's another one. This is Spring Rain by Mark Hamer. Now you've heard me talk about Mark Hamer before. Um, he wrote How to Catch a Mole and Seed to Dust, and this is the third in his Gardener's Trilogy. So Mark Hamer um, lives in Wales and spent a lot of his life as a mole catcher and as a gardener for other people. And um, in this book, it's similar to his other ones where he weaves in stories of his life, past and present, and really paints this absolutely beautiful picture for us of what it is to be in the present, communing with nature. And I will just, I am a lifelong fan. I will read whatever the heck he writes. Um, he is just one of those, one of those minds that I connect with, that I'm just really grateful, you know, I'm living during the same time as him. I think his writing has so much to teach us. Um, so yeah, if you like, if you like to think while also being sort of comforted, um, and if you like nature writing at all, this is absolutely for you, and I, I really recommend that you read the other two in the Gardener's Trilogy. And I think he's working on something else now, so I'm very excited about that. This is a reread. This is my only reread this year, A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson. Rediscovering America on the Appalachian Trail. So, I was in a very hikey state of mind. Um, I know I've mentioned it before, I've through hiked the Appalachian Trail. It was my biggest dream and passion in life growing up, and I did that in 2018. So I like to return to the AT whenever I get the chance, and uh, luckily I'm only like 8 to 10 hour drive from it, um, since I'm in Florida. So I like to go up to, usually North Carolina is kind of my second home base, and I'll do some AT hikes nearby. But this year I went to Maine and I hiked the 100 mile wilderness with a friend. So, you know, I hadn't done that section of the trail in five years. And um, going back there and, and doing that now, in the mindset I'm in now, it, it was so healing. I won't even get into it because that's a whole other story, but after I did that hike, I was like, I want to throw myself back into the world of reading about hiking, and I hadn't read this book in a long time, but it is one of my lifelong favorites, and this was probably the third third or fourth time I've read it, and it just holds up. It is so funny. Bill Bryson makes me laugh so much while also making me learn, and there's nothing I love more than that. Like, the descriptions of him, he's trying to through hike the AT in this memoir, and he and his friend, just the shenanigans that they get into, it is hilarious. I mean, some of these things are making me laugh out loud. Um, and then of course you learn a lot about the AT and um, its place in this country and how important it is to preserve it. Um, so yes, highly, highly recommend, and I recommend everything by Bill Bryson. I've re I'm looking at my collection of his right now and I've got like, I don't know, 12 of his books. Um, and, yeah, I still have some more to read. I think he has retired, sadly for us. Um, so we will just have to go back and keep rereading every wonderful thing he's written. 
Next up, this might be this controversially, I don't know, this might be my favorite book of the year. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Are we surprised? Is anybody surprised? Um, I, I had seen this so many times in the bookstore and heard people talk about it and um, post about it and I just was like, really? Like, are adults are reading um, Greek mythology retellings? Because that was something I was so into as a child. And it just didn't occur to me that there were books written for adults in the same vein and that they would do anything for me. My god, I'm glad I read this book. <laughs> Holy crap, I... I can't even tell you, like, the chokehold that this book had on me. When I first read it, I was like, okay, I'm dedicating my life to this book. Um, it was the first time in a very long time that I have felt this into a novel. I stayed up all night finishing it and cried so much. The prose is beautiful. Madeline Miller has a way with words. You can tell she spent many years on this book, researching and writing it. And it is the most beautiful, tragic love story ever. Just read it. Um, you will love it. And then it's kind of funny, but the last two books are also Madeline Miller because, of course, I went on a deep dive after that. So I got uh, Galatea, which is actually a short story, but it's um, it's around 50 pages and it's in this teeny tiny little volume, which I just love. I, I think short stories do not get their due and we should be talking about them more, reading them more and, and putting them in their own tiny little books because... They, I think they deserve as much recognition as novels do. And this is another um, Greek mythology retelling, and it was so beautifully done. And I read the whole thing on a plane. Recommend. And then we have Madeline Miller again. This is the last one. Circe. I related to, th related to this character so much. And it was so I didn't get into this book as much as Song of Achilles, but that's because I think it's more of a slow burn. It's, it isn't as much like drama, action, um, crazy stuff going on as Song of Achilles, because you know that takes place during the Trojan War. This is like hundreds of years um, of Cersei's life and her finding her place in the world and who she wants to be. And it's, so it's really a story of self-discovery, which I absolutely love. I love a character-driven plot. Um, I love an inner story, a character analysis, a character study, if you will. So again, another Greek mythology retelling, and she just hits the nail on the head every time. I think she's working on a book about Persephone now. Cannot wait to read it. I, I feel bad, like, because I know as a writer it takes forever sometimes to let a book or story like percolate get ready and and then all the writing and the editing and restructuring and and then the whole publishing process which I haven't even gotten into it takes a long ass time and I'm over here like come on come on give me your books let me read your books when are you gonna put out another book and we're all doing that and it's like the pressure that she must feel especially after after having two best-selling novels Whoo! A lot of pressure and I, I hope um, Madeline Miller you know we love you and take care of yourself that's first and foremost um, we will be here when your book is ready okay so y'all know I don't like to get negative here but I figured we'll just we'll just mention three of my least favorites from this year um, this past year <sighs> okay have not finished this yet but I will I'll do it! I will finish it. I have like almost 200 pages left and I've read almost 400. It is a long book. It is Heretics of Dune. The first Dune was so good and so engrossing and even the second, third, and fourth were very much more interesting than this one. This one I'm really really struggling with. It's all the introduction of all the new characters that I, I don't care for. Um, I think I started it in like April and eventually I, I was like I'm never gonna get to anything else if I don't just put this down. So I had to put it down. But I don't ever like to not finish a book so 
I figure if I read like five pages a day for the next month, you know, I'll finish this book. Um, but yeah, just it didn't live up to the others, in my opinion, and I still have one more after this. <laughs> and I hope that one is, is better. Okay, <clears throat> this one, Before the Coffee Gets Cold, over one million copies sold. I mean, there was just so much hype for this one, and I only read it because my friend had it from a book club and she was like, here, I hated this. Do you want to, do you want to read it? So I'm like, sure, I got to see how terrible it could possibly be. It, it, it's not that it's terrible. It's just for me, there's no, um, there's nothing interesting about the writing, about the style of it. And the plot is a bit cheesy to me. You know, you're in a cafe where you, if you sit in a certain seat, you can go back in time. Um, but it has to be, there's so many rules surrounding what you can do, where you can, um, you have to, like, go back to a time that you were in the cafe before. It's all just, like, I, is it magical realism? I can't really get down with that. Um, so it just wasn't for me. Obviously, a lot of people liked it. <laughs> Speaking of books that were not for me, that a lot of people like, and I got so much hate for this. This is one of my most hated videos. I'm not taking it down because I think what I'm saying is important. Outlander. You don't know how heartbroken I was that I didn't love this book. I wanted to sink my teeth into a massive series and then get into the TV show and just have like content to consume. So much material. I mean, this is a fat book and there's so many episodes of the show. I made it through this, but oh my god, I, the themes in this book, which I'm not even going to mention, but like the violence mainly, the violence, um, sexual and otherwise, it was so gratuitous and unnecessary, and I feel just didn't do anything for the plot, and could it could have been done in a way that was, you can write about those things in a way that I feel is not damaging or condoning those things, and it did feel like it was condoning a lot of bad things. And that's all I'll say. If you want to watch my video, it's it's not scathing, because I don't like to be scathing, but I was upset. Um, so yeah, you know, that was like a month of my life that I spent reading that, because I don't quit. I'm not, I'm not a quitter when it comes to books. So that, that is everything for 2023. Um, let's, Let's leave it on a positive note and just take another look at this beautiful book. This wonderful book. So, like, definitely this one and The Body Keeps the Score, maybe my most recommended of this year, though I really loved all the ones that I showed you. And I would love to know what was your favorite book that you read last year. Um, did you find that you were getting into, like, a different genre than you normally would? Did you exceed your reading goal or not meet it? And uh, please be kind to yourself if you did not meet your goal. It happens to the best of us. I was like, you know what? I'm just kind of living a lot of life this year. So that's why I just I simply didn't have as much time to sit down and devote to reading. Anyway, best of luck with your new reading goals. We're going to talk about that in the next video. And until then, happy reading.